Hello, Internet, and welcome to the Free-to-Play Cast, brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free-to-play related. I'm your host, as always, Magic Man, and today, I'm outnumbered. I've got two ladies on the line that want to talk about some games. First, back from last week, it's Kaylin. How are you? Doing great. Three weeks in a row now. Yeah, you're pulling a brim here. I am. He's got the record at four, and I, I think that's where it stops. You're not scheduled for next week, are you? No, I am not. <laughs> but Brim is, so. <laughs> <laughs> and also on the line, she's back by popular demand. Damina, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Ready to talk about some games, get some bombs out of the way, and uh, talk about some viewer feedback? Ready, ready. All right, well, let's keep it short and simple and get to the point because we got a great interview to share with you in this show, too. So let's head on over to the news. We're going to start off right with Seven Core by G Potato. Now, this is a game that there hasn't been a whole lot of information about. Uh, they, they do have a trailer up. Uh, if you visit the website, you can pop on the forums and, and pull some information from there. But really one that uh, I think not a lot of people are really aware was even getting ready to come to beta. Uh, let alone was out there at all. So closed beta actually starts on August 9th. Now, Seven Core is a, a little bit of a mix, sci-fi, magic, all takes place in a post-apocalyptic world, so Kaylin sounds like they're just kind of grabbing everything and boom, putting it together. We're going to give you some sci-fi, we'll give you some magic, and yeah, it'll be in a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, mounted combat, huge in this game, and I know Damina's been taking a look at that and will give her opinion there. I mean, they have tons of different mounts that they've described. Flying mounts, ground mounts, underwater mounts, mounts that can do, you know, one or two of those or all three of those. Uh, you can even take over NPC mounts for a little bit once you beat them. So there's not a whole lot of, of information. But, Damina, you've been doing some research about this one, right? Oh, I'm so excited about this one. All right. So t tell us why. Why should why should Kaylin and, and I be excited? Well, so personally, I have always liked the pets and the mounts and things like that, but I really like that the mounts play such a key role um, as far as what I've been able to find on here because now, I mean, and, and although it's been seen before, I mean, you've got aerial combat, which if that's done properly, could be amazing. And we've seen um, it done wrong. <laughs> well, and then um, I also like that, you know, when it, now these mounts also can play a role in your in your parties when you go to do your dungeons and, and your raids. And, and so now you need the right mix of jobs and classes and, and you need the right mix of mounts. And I just ha think that it has huge potential because that, that proper mix is just so important to be able to complete, you know, your, your game content. And, and I don't know, I just, I mean, they have some that you can travel on, some that are for support positions and they can heal or buff. I just, I really, really dig the mount aspect of this game. So what's the, the mounts in dungeons and raids like that? Uh, that sounds pretty interesting, but then my question would be, you know, where, is this like a tank DPS uh, healer type thing, or are the mounts taking over some of that? What's, what's going on with that, with the whole mix of party characters? So what I'm able to find as far as that is concerned is, is just basically that some of these mounts provide different buffs some of them are able to serve the healing function because there is no heal class. Yeah, that's why that was very interesting to me that there is no healing class. Right, right. I saw that too. So no, no dedicated healer. So we're still not doing, we're not doing like the Holy Trinity tank DPS uh, healer thing. But it sounds like we're we're still going to have tanks. You know, because the only one I saw that they specified was there was no healing class. I'm assuming that they're going to have tanks. Um, at so least. It's I, I, the available classes listed are warrior, gunner, magician, and assassin. Yeah, so I got to so, think like warrior is going to be more tank. More tank. It looks like tank, range DPS, like like, hun like the hunter class, of course. It'll be like a gunner, the typical hunter, and magician. So yeah, that's what it sounds like. I'd, I'd guess the warriors are a tanking class. The gunner's OP. I could tell you that already. <laughs> <laughs> Just right off the bat, the gunner's OP. I hate the assassins. Yeah. So. <laughs> the game hasn't even launched, and I already hate him. <laughs> uh, nerf gunners. No, I, I don't know. What do you guys think about the trailer? Uh, Kaylin, uh, you've checked it out. Uh, well, we've all seen it, but what what did you think about it? I, I'm actually really excited about this game. I, I thought the trailer was... I liked the trailer. I thought it was a, a really good look at... Kind of give you a feel for what everything at least looks like. And I think they 
looks like they've done a really great job with it. Yeah, I mean, they didn't go into detail that makes me go, oh, you know, I've got to play that game. Um, oh, that just looks amazing. But I, I'm kind of with you. There was enough about it that I was like, oh, I want to know more. And, and therefore, I'm going to play it. Not, it looks amazing. I've got to play it. But it just... There's there's more there. I want to take a look at that. I'll be doing the first look video for it um, when we're able to jump in. The official closed beta starts August 9th, but uh, you can download it and get everything ready August 2nd. So my only my only concern here, uh, I like the way that Alids is done, which is a G potato product. Um, you know, people disagree with me on whether it's pay to win or not based on things available in the cash shop, and that's fine. But there are other games that G Potato is responsible for that I, I, you know, me and a lot of people agree are pay to win, and there's serious problems with the cash shop or hacking or whatever. So, does G Potato's name on this dissuade either of you from really taking it too seriously? Not for me. I, I, I liked Alids. Yeah, well, I, I'm. I liked I'm Alids, a, but then you also got to turn the, the, was kind the of other a side of the coin, though. You've got repels. Yeah. Which is just notorious for hacks and not getting things back, and you know, it's there's been multiple posts on on repels on different things, and it, so it's you know, I know they're different teams within G Potato, but you've got both extremes there, where one's a really solid game, people can argue about whether it's pay to win or not, and that's fine. But then on the other end of the spectrum, you have a game that, wow. There's there's problems there, and they may not be in in some players' estimation addressing those problems in in a timely fashion. I hope Seven Core is going to be more towards the Alids end, because I'm definitely intrigued by the game. But I've got that little question mark in the back of my head that G Potatoes attached to it, so you know. Maybe they'll turn over a new leaf. That I think that's. <laughs> Unfortunate. Once you get a bad name for something like that, then it takes a lot more to earn that trust back from your fans. Yeah, you know. and and like I brought up repels, the repels community has been dealing with it for a long time now. Um, unfortunately, you know, my my heart goes out to them. I've never been a big repels fan to begin with, just as a game in and of itself. But to the people that love that game, there there's problems with it. Uh, and then I love, on the other side, I absolutely love Alids. Uh, I like I like it, and you, you know, we can sit here all day and say, I think it's pay to win, I think it's not pay to win, and that's fine, but neither one of us is arguing the point of, you know, it's a broken game, and there's all of this going on. We're not saying that about Alids, mm -hmm. uh, which is good, and makes me hope that 7-Core leans more towards the Alids side of the spectrum, because, like you guys said, I'm super excited to take a peek at it. I don't know if it's going to be an awesome game because we don't have a ton of, you know, gameplay video or information about it or no dev diaries or anything like that. But there's definitely with the whole cross of sci-fi and magic and post-apocalyptic and then the heavy roll mounts play, there are a bunch of cool things going on that I do want to see. Well, this did you hear that? Did you read this? You can wager money and items yeah. on duels. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's Come on. There's <laughs> twenty v twenty guild PvP. I mean, I'm not a PvPer, but twenty v twenty. I could probably get into that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of cool things that yeah. it seems to be doing. I just hope they're executed well and, and that it's fun. I mean, obviously, that's why we're going to get into the damn thing, right? I think it has a lot of potential, so it'll be interesting to see. Yep. I yeah, agree. They didn't have Alids on there. So like, if, if they had all they had was just crap and issues, but I, you know, I, I have a little hope because I've seen how Alids has been. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to get in on the the seven core beta, I know we've got uh, as of this recording. Don't hold me to keys still being available by the time this airs. But as of this minute of recording, there were still seven core beta keys available on mmobomb.com. And uh, you can go and get in the game uh, on August 9th, but you'll be able to access everything August 2nd. So you should see a first look there coming up shortly. Uh, speaking of betas, guys, this is this is a beta season. <laughs> I mean, not only do we have 7 Core, which, which we just talked about, and we're all kind of thumbs up, we're going to jump in the beta, yes? On 7 Core? Yes, oh, absolutely. No. Okay, so three thumbs up. But uh, we've also got a couple other betas, closed and open and you know, all over the place. Uh, we've got Raiders 
coming Heck up. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm there. <laughs> when uh, that. we we got the keys for uh, Raiders at the site, and um, as soon as I got the the test keys for for the free to play cast host, I sent a Facebook message to to Kaylin and and one to uh, Havoc, and I said, "Hey, I have your your Raiders keys," and uh, you know, here's where where you go to get it. You'll be able to play on this date. It's what August eighth, I believe. Ninth, I think. Ninth, August ninth as well. Um, and I said, Here, here's your keys. And Caitlin replied back with, thank you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most exciting thing that's happened this week. <laughs> and there's a ton of people. I mean, we had 10,000 keys for Raiders when we put up the, the keys and said, Hey, come get your keys. We had 10 grand. There are 2,700 left. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and th- we're talking about it being up for four days. They went up on the 20th. We're recording on the 24th. So four days, uh, three-fourths of the keys gone already. Uh, so obviously one uh, highly anticipated title. Uh, Kaylin, what are you looking forward to in this? I mean, you saw the first look video uh, that, that I put on the website a while ago back in Alpha Build. Why are you looking forward to this? I just like the combat style. I like the, the game. Just it, it looks good, the and like the combat style. It makes sense, and I'm I'm looking forward to people actually having to have some kind of skill to play a video game, and not just be able to key mash button click whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're not obviously Raiders isn't the first to use this action type combat, but um, I, I think it's safe to say that it's probably one of the. Uh, very few that are both free to play and triple A as far as the look and feel of the development. Oh yeah. So I can I can see why a bunch of people are excited about this. I'm excited about it too. I liked Terra, uh the the subscription based game uh that has that same type of action combat feel to it. And other games are doing that as well. Again, they're not the the only two or they're not the first to do it. Uh, I agree with you. I love that you know, that type of combat where it's not just I have to be facing you and it's going to land. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's I, I, you've got to be in front of me when I swing this sword this way. And if you get off to the side of me mid swing, it's going to miss you and you have the ability to dodge. And uh, I think it's about time that more and more games started picking that up. And I'm excited about Raiders. What about you, uh, Damina? Don't you feel kind of like this is you're just much more involved? I mean, it's not just sitting there staring at a screen and, and I'll cast this and then I'll do this. I mean, you have to be actively engaged oh, a lot yeah, definitely. more. You know, and I know somebody's going to post on the comments, guys, this isn't the first game ever to do it. Uh, we know. But it's pretty. <laughs> and, know. you know, and I don't know. I Actually, I, I think I think Lispy Voice should have should have said that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, this is your first one. You know, <laughs> We we know we know it's not the first action combat based game. It's not going to be the last either. It's you know the, I kind of see the whole market shifting there right now as you see more and more titles adopting that. Uh, big fan. So that starts on uh, August. Just to make sure we have it correct here. Where the hell is it? Eh, it's not on here. Oh no! I lost my notes. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my show notes. Oh no! All right, well I'll find it for you. It's August eighth, August eighth, or August ninth, one of the two. Uh, what else? We've got uh, Mastia going into beta as well. Again, first looks already available on the website for that one. Uh, did you ladies have you played that, or did you check out the first looks, or, or do some research at all? I have not played it, but I did check out the first look and researched it a little bit. Yep, me too. What do, what do you think? Well, uh, Damina, you got a chance to play it here. I mean, you know, you, everybody knows you're my wife, so she, she you got a chance to get a little hands-on time with this one. Uh, so what do you think, Kaylin? I'm still on the fence about it. I guess I'd have to play it, I think. It's one of those, it looks like it might be interesting, but I'm just still not quite sure about it. I think I'd, I actually need to try it and see. Okay, so I'm going to ask then, because I have played it. I also talked to the developers uh, prior to the, uh, by the way, Raiders is August 8th. Okay. Yay. One day sooner. Yep. August 8th. Uh-huh. It's official. August 8th. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to ask, why are you on the fence for this one? And then I'm going to give you my, my feedback too, having, 
played it pretty extensively. I mean, just looking at it and reading what I've read, it just it, it just seems kind of like a lot of what's already out there to me. So I don't know. I could be wrong. Damina, your thoughts? Well, you know that I like when you're able to go in there and accomplish something in in you know if you in a short period of time if you don't have time to get with your friends. And so my thing that I like about this is that you can hire your NPCs. You know, if you want to go and do something on your own that you need yeah. help with. So. I mean, I like it. And that was one of the things in the developer's call, too, that they made a big deal of was the mercenary system. And I was like, yeah, okay, well, other games have done this. You know, this, why are we making a big deal about this? Uh, but apparently, as you level up, you're able to hire more and more mercenaries. At first, it's just one, and then you can make it bigger. And I'm like, okay, so other games have done this, too. But then they, they've they also uh, tailored the dungeons so that you can run them with friends, or you can feasibly take them on with a party of you of and NPCs. Uh, so I'm with you. I, I really dig that. One of the aspects of the, the mercenary system that I absolutely love, I think this is a great idea, is if you know that you're going to, let's say, uh, Kaylin, you're going to Vegas for the weekend. So you're not going to be playing. You can take your character in Maestia and uh, put your character itself on the NPC market. And then when somebody purchases an NPC to go running things, your character is also gaining experience and gold or, and whatnot uh, while you're not even playing. So you may come back and see that you're two levels higher because people murked you out to, to go run things with them and, and you never had to even boot up the game. <laughs> that is that is a cool idea. I think if that's a cool well, feature. That's a great, great idea. Yeah, I think it's a cool feature. Now, my thoughts on the game itself and when I did the first look, I don't normally give like a rating or a number, a 1 to 10 type thing. On this one I did. Uh, because I, I put it, like you said, Kaylin, I put it at about a 7. Uh, and my reason for that is it's it's average. Mm -hmm. They didn't really do anything wrong. You know, the game plays well, it controls well. The, the only issue that I had with the controls, and I, I didn't even look because I was doing the first look at the time uh, to see if it can be remapped, but um, to click on certain things in the hotbar, if, you, if you're, you know, mouse playing it like that, it's a right click on things and not a left. <laughs> so That's I gonna screw me up. I'm used <laughs> yeah. to like right click to self casting. <laughs> yeah, I was constantly oh like dragging things off my hot bar with a left click, and then I'm like, oh god, I gotta lock this down. This is just killing me. <laughs> But that's just a small gripe. I mean, the game doesn't do anything really wrong. Uh, there wasn't anything, even though it was a beta, you know, where you're going to see some mistakes. Even though it was a beta, there wasn't anything that I was like, oh, man, this is awful. The game played well. The controls were tight. It was typical tab targeting, hot bar, you know, uh, action there. I was running with a, a ranger class and firing arrows. Uh, and you could tell it was tab targeting because there was just like this small range behind me where I was out of line of sight. <laughs> and that was it. I mean, my guy was firing off arrows at the most extremely odd angles as I'm kiting things around. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm ro running forward, firing things down and to the left, almost right behind me. And if I turn a little bit to the right, then the target's out of sight. It's behind me, but not by much. So there's like little things like that, and I'm sure they'll tweak. But uh, it was just, it was an average game, you know. I, I ran some dungeons, I ran some alone, and some in parties, and everything worked. It played well, and couldn't tell you what the hell the story's about. I didn't read a blessed quest. <laughs> uh, that's another thing. The questing they use, and other games have used this system as well. But it's one that I think should be used more and more often. Is the the quests come and go wherever you're at. It's you don't kill 15 quests off, run back to the town, turn all the quests in, pick up the next batch of quests, run all the way back out, except this time further, and then come back to the... It doesn't work like that. There are quests in the environment that you can pick up from people uh, and go and do, and then come back to them and turn it in. But the primary questing is done through the, the prayer system, where an icon is in the upper right corner of your screen. You just click on it, turn the quests in, pick up the next couple that are in the whole storyline thing, and keep going. There's no, you you feel a little more immersed, mm -hmm. and and you play it a lot more. Because uh, I I don't know about you guys, Kaylin. You you ever do that? Well, I'm just going to turn these five quests in, and I don't feel like running back, so I'm going to call it a night. 
yes all the time <laughs> yeah you know that's basically the way it goes uh in this in maestia that's that's not the way it goes because you you're never really running back to town to to turn things in so it takes away like a lot of what would make the questing tedious which is nice yeah, well, the the travel, the running back and forth from the questing. I mean, the quests are still tedious. It's kill ten of these, come back, get ten gold and a hug. Uh, you know, nothing particularly special. Uh, but yeah, but it, I think I'm more likely to continue on and, you know, okay, well, I can do a couple more tonight if I don't have to, you know, spend 15 minutes running back to town. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There is a lot more of the you're willing to play it a little bit longer because of that. Uh, they also, during the beta... Uh, when you log off, it'll tell you that when you log on again, you're going to get this reward, which may be like a costume or whatever. But I thought that was kind of a neat way to say, hey, make sure you log in again. That is neat. I like <laughs> yeah. that. Because when you log in, we're going to give you a hat. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I, I'm with you, Kaylin, and I've played it pretty extensively. Uh, yeah, there's yeah, nothing I saw seven. that would make me say no. Absolutely yeah. not. I'm not... But it's, it's, I'm not quite as excited about it as I am about some other stuff. Yeah, and my, my wording on it was, if you're bored with whatever game you're playing right now, MMORPG-wise, because it's definitely in that category, if you're bored with whatever you're playing now, or you just want a change of scenery, then yeah, Mastia is going to be a good title for you to check out. If you're looking for something mind-shatteringly new, then it's not for you to check out. So, uh, All in all, good game. 7 out of 10 is what I gave it, even though I don't really rate games all that often. Uh, Dark Blood also beta. Whew. You can go and play this one. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Uh, Damina, when when you were back in, you didn't start gaming really until the PlayStation One. But were you ever like a brawler, a brawler girl, like one of those arcade fighters, anything like that? Oh my goodness, I cannot remember the name of the game. There was one that I absolutely adored. I spent so many quarters on. You should know because you were with me. What was it? Do you remember? <laughs> your quarters. Oh, no, I, are, you're talking about Gauntlet, aren't you? Um, somewhat. Aren't you talking about doc, uh, gar, uh, Gauntlet Dark Blood or Dark no, something? Know. Dark Legacy? What? Gauntlet Dark Legacy? Oh, it was some kind of Gauntlet. I loved that game so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, well, you know, it's kind of a brawler. But, that's uh, as close as I get. That's as close as you get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Gauntlet Dark Legacy, uh, which... You made me pick up for the PlayStation Two uh, at the time. Translate though, so yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a very good translation. Mm -mm. So that's not really a brawler. I get where you're going there. What about you, uh, Kaylin? You a brawler girl? Like to un just unplug the mine and beat the shit out of stump something for a while? <laughs> a little bit, mostly because I have brothers. I <laughs> <laughs> mostly because I have a brother that I was. So what do you think of Dark Blood? <laughs> that's Just what eh. I thought. It. Like, eh. well, I mean, that kind of goes with your opinion, though. That you you don't you're not really a brawler. Yeah, chick. exactly. What about you, Demina? What are your thoughts on on Dark Blood? Um, I don't know. I I think it's not really my kind of game so much. I'm I'm not a just unleash for the sake of unleashing, but. There isn't much I won't try, so I'll probably give it a shot. The the visuals were pretty good. Um, yeah, it, it looks good. So, I don't know. I, I don't really like the words bloody, you know. <laughs> I, I just, that, that just isn't so much my thing. I, I don't, but I'll try it because I'll try anything and I'll have to get back to you on that one and let you know what I think because, you know, I don't know. Okay, I know I'm on the show with two ladies, but I, I've got to bring this up. <clears throat> and if you watch the first look, uh, any of the listeners watch the first look, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a surprise during character creation that that happens on that first look. Uh, oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so most games, you know, during character creation, or some games, will give you the option to take a peek at your character and some of the different armor sets that might be available in the game later. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so the Dark Blood does that for you. Uh, and so I created a, a female and was playing around with it and looking at the armor and stuff. And it's the typical, you know, fantasy female armor, the stuff that wouldn't protect anything if if a woman wore it in combat. Well, uh, tech, we we all wear that all the time, don't we? Isn't I mean? Are you whatever? A, ugh, I wish you wore that stuff all the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
but uh, yeah, so it's like the they have abnormally large chests to begin with, and then it's they're wearing a whole split armor thing where my boobs are safe, but if you stab me right in the heart, I'm a goner. You say um, what's important. Right, protect what's important. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, one of the options in Dark Blood to take a look at is your character in undergarments. <laughs> <laughs> and let's just say that they're not lying when they say undergarments. Because bathing suits or bikinis would be a very liberal use of the word bikini. I mean, these are some tiny, tiny undergarments. And let's just say the physics are rather jiggly. Uh, I mean, even rotating your character gets you some odd motion. <laughs> going on on the female chest. There's also a slider for the female chest, which does nothing to the male. You can't even use it. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Well, I thought, you know, okay, I'll switch to the male and try this because I thought maybe, you know, it would make him broader in the chest or, like, pull out the shoulders or, or you see, so you have this little skinny guy or you could have this big, you know, football-type build. Or you no, could have it, moobs. Yeah, <laughs> or you could have moobs. Man boobs. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't do anything. It grays out for men. You can't use it at all. Uh, it's only for the women, and your your size range when you're creating characters uh, for the female chest is anywhere from slightly ridiculous to dangerously big. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the range. I mean, we're not talking like A, B, C. We're, no, 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 no. We're we're talking very slightly ridiculous to just dangerously big. Uh, <laughs> So I had a male character created. Uh, you guys got to check out the first look if you haven't seen this. I, I had a male ca character created that I only used to log in, configure an Xbox 360 controller to play it with, and make sure the audio settings were, were good with recording a first look video. So I didn't really do anything with the male. And then during the first look recording, I created the female um, and kicked it back to the character selection screen. At which point, my male is sitting there in a loincloth, you know, just chilling, waiting for me to click on him. And my female character that I've just created is sitting to his right with, in, in a window, is sitting on the window ledge with one leg kind of just down onto the floor and the <laughs> other leg in, in like an angle on the window ledge, sitting there in her undergarments. <laughs> with, we should have an adult tag. <laughs> oh, yeah. With a big sword and hooker boots or hooker sh <laughs> hooker heels. And uh, so I gave her a voice and she started hitting all my mail. <laughs> like, you know, with, what's up, baby? How you doing, baby? <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it's a bit on the adult side. There is a lot of blood in the game, too. Um, I, you know what? I liked it for, for what it was. I mean,. Don't compare it to going to play Aeon or, or going to play Eve. or You can't compare it. I mean, it's a totally different genre, obviously. But for what it was, a beat-em-up, uh, a little bit of a brawler with some instant spacing, it was fun. I mean, the combos were fun. The visuals are nice. Uh, you do get armor at some point. Uh, but, you know, I could see people being ticked off with both gender locking of classes first. Um, you know, males and females can only be the certain classes. And then the, the ridiculous, over-sexualized female form on there. Now, don't get me wrong. Magic Man likes, you know, the females just as much as anybody. But damn! <laughs> I mean, you would you would get hurt if you tried to mess with those girls. <laughs> Put an eye out. Yeah, there's, there's no motorboating. That's, no. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to get your eardrums punctured. Um, anyway... <laughs> I just see a lot of like teenage boys making female characters and just running back and forth across the there screen. Were, there were some right? great comments on the video where uh, people were saying that if they were playing Dark Blood and somebody walked in, they would switch to porn. <laughs> porn is less embarrassing. Yeah, it's less embarrassing. <laughs> All right, uh, last up on the beta front, uh, Night Age. Again, first look up on the site if you guys want to check it out. Now, this is a bit of a, an unusual. It's not a, a lot of companies do it, but it's not really the norm anymore. Uh, this is a closed beta that's only running on particular days. Uh, they'll put it up for like a week, and then they'll take it down and make some tweaks, and then put put it on there for another week and and stuff like that. Um, so, in general, 
first thoughts, and and then we're gonna move on to uh, our special interview, Kalen. Another anime. <laughs> 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 don't get me wrong i i like them there's some really great ones but it's just like, come on <laughs> oh come on what's the matter with an anime MMO? that was my well that was that was my first thought on it, it was god another one that, that but uh, watching it, it it didn't look really that bad to me once well, I actually, the I, initial... I, make, I make fun of you because in my first look at the beginning, I say, <sighs> we're doing a first look for another anime MMORPG. And then I uh, promptly take a drink and light up a smoke. <laughs> 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 because I think we're all kind of feeling this, aren't we? That the the anime things just beat to all hell. And most of that's because they're very cheap to produce and get out there quickly. Uh, but I, I'm sick of anime MMOs right now. And Damina, you love the cute shit. How are you I, feeling on this? I do, but even I find it hard to get excited about something that you feel like it's just so, I don't know. You, <laughs> you know, I do like the cute stuff. I, I you know, I, I will openly admit to that. We all know that I love the cute stuff. However, I mean, even I can only take so much cute. <laughs> yeah, and and Night Age. Uh, okay, I kind of liked some of the gameplay elements, you know, and it's the same old stuff. Somebody on the the website asked me for my pros and cons in the comments, and so I gave my pros and cons. Now give them to you guys right now. My pros, I like the art style, even though it was like an anime style, it was different, and the art ends up looking really cool when you're in game. Uh, they have mounted combat as well, um, so, so I can see that being fun. Um, they have a, these assistants that they call pupa uh, that you can gather from anywhere. They're like eggs laying around, and you got to carry them back to town and do the slow-ass walk while you're carrying this egg. <laughs> but you can hatch them, and then you can, you can gather bunches and different types, and then there's a fusioning system where you can fuse multiple ones together and, and change the traits and stuff like that. So I can see that being very addictive if you were a fan of like the Monster Rancher franchise. Everybody remember that way back when? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Monster Ranch. I think the first time I played that was PlayStation 1. Uh, so I could see that being addictive for the people that like that type of game. My number one con with the game was fix the damn font. Oh, I hate <laughs> that. It th- That kind of thing just drives me crazy. It drove me up the wall. And so many games have it right now where, like, even in the quest logs, the quest text for something, a word will be split. You know, the sentence will run to the right, and then, oh, shit, we're out of room. Let's no, let's not move the next word to, to the next line. Let's only, let's keep three letters here and move the next four of that word to the next line. And it happens three or four times in the same quest log. No hyphens or anything, just shift the letters. It's ridiculous. Not only that, uh, when you zone into new areas, it flashes the name of the area across the center of the screen, <laughs> nice and big. Okay, fine. Yeah, I, I could... I can deal with that. Let me know where the hell I'm going. But the bottom half of the font is cut off, for crying out loud. <laughs> so J's and G's and anything, P's, any Q, anything that goes below that line of it's anybody's like... anybody's guess. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> is that an O or is it a G? I have no idea. And is, you know, is, is this place called Ood or God? I don't know. It's, Ood. <laughs> Ood. This is the first example that came to my mind. Fantastic. Uh, and that it, just, it just bugged the hell out of me. The questing formula was the same. And I know that it's beta. I know that it's beta. But there was a bug that plagued random players. And by random players, I mean two out of the three characters I created. Uh, where you just all of a sudden couldn't turn a quest in. You could talk to the NPC, but you couldn't click on turn quest in. You couldn't even click to escape the conversation. The only way to get out of it was to hit escape on your keyboard, and you could get out of it. And that was it. But then you're done. I mean, you can't do anything else with the storyline when that happens. They have to fix that. And not only did it happen in the starting area, it happened in the frickin' tutorial. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry, that's just ridiculous. I mean, things like that and fonts being... That is just... That stuff should have been handled in 
alpha. I mean, you didn't do anything. But I mean, alpha comes before beta. You're supposed yeah. to. And it's you know, just one of those things. It's like, up. okay, I get quest bugs. It's a beta. I totally get that. You know, and that's what you want us to play and give our feel. Oh, we went to run this dungeon and the boss bugged out three times while we tried to do it. Yeah, I totally get that. But these are the tutorial quests. And, and the have a first bug so big that it prevents you from continuing. I mean, really. Yeah, and I mean, you could go and do other quests, but it's like, if you're in a quest line, boom, you're done. You can't yeah. do it. Mm-mm. And I tried logging out and logging back in, shutting the game down, coming back in, uh, nothing. And it was different quests for the two characters that it happened to me on. It was different quests, totally different person to turn it in, looked on the forums for all kind of information. All, the only information I found was that it was happening to, happening to other people, and generally it seemed to be the same NPCs, but it always it wasn't always. And the only post at that time uh, that we, we saw from uh, the Night Age team was that, yeah, we can't isolate it. It's a random bug. We're still working on it. Wow. You know, and it's just like, come on, that's that's got to be fixed. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm with you guys. So we got three thumbs up on 7 core beta. We got three thumbs up on Raider Z. We got, what? Three thumbs up on Mastia, or three sideways thumbs for just okay? What? I'd give it a sideway in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. In the middle. Dark Blood gets a thumbs up from me, with the exception of it just being overtly uh, sexual advertising, uh, which <laughs> I don't necessarily personally have a problem with. It's not something I like, but I don't have a problem with it. But I could see how you know moms and dads and, and other people, adults, would, would not like it. So where are you guys on Dark Blood? I just, it's not my genre. Thumb down <laughs> for you, Damina. I'm not going to give it a thumbs down yet, but it's definitely not. It doesn't appear to be my type of thing. It's However, totally I'm going to give it a shot. It may be we... really fun to play. Maybe once I play it, I'll find that I'm wrong. So we got a, a down, a, a, a sideways not making a call yet, and an up on Dark Blood. And then Night Age, what are you ladies thinking? I don't think I'm even going to try that one, to be honest. Down. <laughs> Yeah, but right now it, I'm, you're releasing a beta with all those bugs. I I really have no interest at this point. Yeah, I'm going to leave my thumb halfway. The only reason is because uh, I did actually enjoy the game, and I, I did dig the art style, uh, and I would have liked to have tried it some more and gotten some more information on, like, fusion and things like that for the pupas because it doesn't happen until a certain level. But it was as soon as those bugs happened, I was like, ah, I'm done. Forget it. I'm going to go play Solitaire. <laughs> I turned into an old man. <laughs> All right, so uh, Firefall, next topic, Red 5 Studios. Got an interview this week. We're going to play it for the listeners right now. Interviewed uh, Mark Kern, CEO, COO from Red 5, the masterminds behind Firefall. So why don't we listen to that interview real quick, and then we'll just give our uh, our take on one or two things that he had to say. All right, everybody, Magic Man here, and I'm getting to spend some quality time with somebody that uh, everybody's after these days, it seems, uh, Mr. Mark Kern, CEO, COO, Red 5. If you don't know the company, you definitely know the game, uh, Firefall, getting ready to come out here sometime in the future. We'll get to that uh, that question later, Mark. That's the one that's obviously on everybody's mind, but thanks for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me, Mike, and uh, it's, really be, it's really great to be on that Awesome. So, okay, you've actually been in the game world for quite some time now. I mean, uh, people probably remember your name attached to uh, StarCraft, uh, World of Warcraft, some really big titles with with Blizzard, obviously. But now you're out on your own. And I've got to know just from a personal mindset, like when you made the decision, you spent time as a team lead, you served as different positions, what what made you ready to just say okay I'm I'm ready to go start my own company and and here's what we're gonna try uh, to do game wise what what was the trigger there? Well, uh, you know I think it, it was because I've always had uh, entrepreneurship in my genes. I mean, my father was that way, a lot of my family's that way, and I I actually tried to start my own game company right out of law school, and uh, and you know it didn't go so well, and Blizzard offered me a job. And so I said, I'm going to go to Blizzard. I'm going to, I'm going to stay there five years and learn how to do it right. And I'm going to try it again. Well, it ended up being closer to eight, but uh, <laughs> eight well spent, I should say. But by the time, you know, six months after WoW had shipped, 
the itch to do something on my own again was was too much. And it wasn't going to be games at first. I said, listen, now that I kind of have some of these principles, maybe I can create, uh, you know, like an online environment for dating. I met my wife through Match.com, and I said, hey, what if you were able to go to Paris on a virtual date and kind of interact before you went on a physical date? Oh, wow. You know, would that be better? But as I looked into it, it just didn't seem that appealing, and the market for it was smaller, I realized, than video games. And so month after month crept by, and I just really wanted to make a game. I was really itching to get back into it. And so I said, well, you know, screw this dating stuff. Let's, <laughs> let's go for it. Let's make a video game. And that's kind of how it all started. Screw love. Let's blow shit up. <laughs> <laughs> so Red 5 comes. Firefall starts development. You're CEO, COO of the company. Everybody on the line listening to this is dying to know what the hell does a CEO, COO really do? Because we've got that preconceived notion of corner offices, big windows, and not being in the office all that much. But I can't imagine it's it's too much like that. Well, you know, it really varies. I think uh, different CEOs tackle it different ways. But I, I can tell you my personal take on it. Um, it's true that you do travel a lot and that you're out of the office a lot, but uh, I actually canceled all my travel this year so I could be here for the final push behind Fireball. I sit out in the open with everybody else. We, we actually, at Red 5, rotate our seats every three months, so I make new friends and neighbors uh, every three months. And, uh, and you know, my job, I see the CEO's job is really about, um, you know, having a vision for the company, a strategy for the company, and then getting people excited about it. I mean, these are creative people. Uh, they have to get excited by the ideas you're talking about. And everyone has to understand them. And uh, and being a coach, right? Like, I think my first mistake as a CEO is trying to do everything myself. And what happens in those cases, you get stuck in meeting after meeting, and the team slows to a crawl productivity-wise. It took me many years uh, during Red 5 to realize that that wasn't my job. My job was to help others be the best they can be. And offer the advice, like, yeah, wow, well, we did this, but I'll say, but this isn't wow, how would you? Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think if you made another wow at this point, people would be very disappointed. <laughs> yes. Well, I, you know, from the beginning, I was not going to make wow. I, I, you know, I remember being on a panel at GDC saying, uh, you know, and the question was, how can you compete with wow? And I said, don't do it. I said, it's, it's, it's got too much of a head start. It's too big. And, and frankly, there's, there's, all these other interesting online game types that were out there before WoW, uh, let's go explore some of those. So, uh, you know, that's the CEO part. The, the, the chief creative officer part is really, uh, I'm fascinated by the story and fiction of Firefall. I mean, I've always been into theater and drama and writing uh, ever since I was a kid in high school and college. So um, part of that was working with Orson Scott Card and, and other talented writers on our team and figuring out what the world of Fireball is like. And we really flesh that out to a degree that probably no one will ever see, but it's, it, it really kind of fuels how we, uh, you know, build the world and I think makes it more rich and believable. I, that's funny that you mentioned that stuff that will never see that most people will never see. That's got to drive you guys nuts is creative talent that you work all this time on something and you're like, oh, I can't wait till somebody plays this. And then it's one of those secret things that most people blow by. <laughs> like, guys, just stop and look down. Look at what I built down here. I, I, had, I, I learned that I, I had to make things extremely obvious. That subtlety in a game is, is often lost. In a story. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if it's an important secret, important point, uh, uh, I'll go out of my way in dialogue to make it really obvious and pop up a tooltip at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so Firefall itself has been incredibly anticipated uh, ever since you guys first released concept art and your first initial few videos. As soon as they were made public, there's just been a huge following for it. You guys just recently announced over 500,000 uh, people signed up, and you guys haven't really started an advertising campaign. That's just mostly word of mouth. Yeah. Why do you think, we talked about a little before the interview, but why do you really think people have latched on to Firefall the way they have? You know, I, I think it's because, um, you know, for, for a couple of reasons. One is that I have this theory like, that we were talking about, that game genre, genres kind of go through uh, these sort of like 10-year cycles, and game tropes 
are really only about entertaining for 10 years before you kind of figure it out, you know. So if you play a, another MMO and it's got, a, even though it's got a different, you know, IP, a different story, you still know, well, I'm going to go find the guys with exclamation points over the head. I'm going to do quests, I'm going to collect items, I'm going to race to the end level, and then I'm going to rate for items and do realm be realm combat. Right. I'm fond of and, saying nobody reads quest text. And nobody reads quest text, you know, and, uh, and, you know, and because it's a, a largely a PvE experience that's not based on your skill, um, that doesn't last very long. It's not like a, a game of chess, right, where even though the rules have been same, the same for thousands of years, you're playing against human opponents, and it's your own skill that matters. And so that, you know, uh, you always feel like you can be better uh, every game you play. It's like, if I just play one more game, you know, I'm going to learn something a little more. Right. In Firefall, we really threw out all the, the character building stuff except for horizontal progression. It's really about your skill. So I think that, uh, that that's the first thing that's refreshing. And the other thing is we, we don't follow any MMO conventions. We don't have exclamation points. Uh, our quests are dynamic. Missions are pushed to you by our uh, AI director called Arrow. And, um, and it has that really fresh feeling about it. And, you know, I... I'm, I'm quite serious about this 10-year lifespan of, of genres. I mean, we talked earlier about how uh, that, you know some of your listeners back in the day might remember flight simulators being the top genre. I mean, it's hard to believe today because yeah. they're everywhere. But if you wanted to be a top publisher, you had to have a flight sim that was competitive. RTSs, you had to have an RTS if you were going to consider yourself a big-name publisher. An adventure game. You had to have an adventure game, and so on and so forth. But these things, I look back, they only last about 10 years, and then players kind of figure out how these games work, and they want to try a new experience. So uh, that's my personal theory. I, I really am taken aback by uh, some of the intensity of the interest, um, and um, I'm grateful for it at the same time. But, um, you know, I think that people just want something new, and it's time to move on, and we have, you know, people don't remember, but, you know, WoW is not the only type of online game there was. We had sandbox-style MMOs. We had, you know, all these different experiments. Uh, you know, Blizzard just happened to say, hey, EverQuest is the most successful. Let's pick that and make it mass market. Let's really lower the barriers to entry and, and get it past 500,000 users. Blizzard could have picked another one and been, um, you know, perhaps equally successful. I think we should go back. There's uh, all sorts of rich ideas in the past that we could mine, and Firefall does some of that with our resource system. You know, our resource system is a lot like uh, the old Galaxy, Star Wars Galaxy's resource system. It's very rich. The crafting is extremely rich. Uh, we're kind of going back to the well for some of these ideas and saying, can we make these bigger than they were, more polished than they were? Now, you mentioned, obviously, and most most of our listeners are going to know, since we're a free-to-play site, that Firefall is using the, the free-to-play model, yep. so kind of forging some new grounds for such an ambitious project uh, you know, from that front. crazy. I mean, uh, two years ago, or a little more than two years ago, when the PAX, we announced we were going to be a AAA free-to-play game, people thought we were absolutely nuts. They couldn't yeah. believe and well, to be honest, there's still some out there that think you're nuts. Having played it, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I have a hard time seeing that many people would have argued with maybe a buy-to-play model, similar to a Guild Wars 2 type thing, now that they've actually been in the game. So, free-to-play, what the hell? What happened? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's everywhere now. And then everyone's, like, saying, you know, I was out of E3, people are saying, oh, my God, free-to-play is the only way to go now. Um, you know, studios are closing left and right under the box model. I think it's because games are just too expensive. I mean, it's, it's, it wants to pay 60 bucks just to figure out if you like a game or not. Right. Um, I think, you know, when there's other options out there and other competitors willing to give you an experience for free and then say, hey, if you happen to like it, pay to support us, right? Right. Um, you know, I think that that's very hard to compete against on a $60 model. Plus, free-to-play games reach such a wider range of people. And I think that as distribution chains fall, as you're no longer really going through, uh, you know, uh, your Walmart or your targets for your games, is that, um, you know, you, you have a situation where you're now kind of really competing on content rather than who controls delivery mechanism. So you need fresher ideas and you need a way to 
connect to people who want those ideas, and the most efficient way to do that is over the internet and digital distribution. So on, on the free-to-play subject, though, you've spoken publicly, and a lot of Red 5 representatives, part of your dev teams, have spoken publicly at events like E3 and things like that about your concept for how a free-to-play game should work. Um, you've said yourself, you know, you're not, not a fan of pay to win. You don't like the, the tiered content. And in a previous example, you had said, uh, think of like a daily quest for World of Warcraft. And yep. what if you spent a couple of bucks and you were able to do two of them instead of one of them per day? That was your kind of vision for how free to play should work. Can mm -hmm. you kind of elaborate on that? Because that's honestly one of the, the things that's been missing so far from the beta, obviously, is the cash shop. So nobody's yeah. got a real sense of how you plan to to use it. How do you plan to avoid pay to win, which I think would be one of the worst things ever to happen to this game with all the hype that's going behind it, is that it turns out you know, to have that pay to win evil label. Our cash Shop has actually been operational internally, and I, I'm very proud to announce that Fireball has made over $153 in our <laughs> and the cash shops, which has gone to our beer fund. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we're 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 getting ready here to to uh, put it out to the public and stop spending our own money in the shop. But uh, you know, we're selling things like aesthetics. I think League of Legends has shown that you can be very successful selling skins, for example. They've also shown that you they're very successful selling you know heroes and boosts and XP boosts and things like this. So we're not going to sell you a gun. I mean, I, I can't say that enough. And we're not going to sell you DLC, right? I can't stand even the concept of DLC, especially the way it's been used these days. Amen. Um, you know, it's, it, it really is, hey, we want to give you access to the world. There's no velvet ropes. And there's accessories. If you would like to accessorize your game experience uh, or services, if you would like to change your name or things like this, there are small fees associated with that that you can pay. And um, so we're selling, um, and I'm working on a, um, a screen here, which is sort of like a, a, a really kind of like um, in-depth character customization and war paint customization screen. You can change the, you can put decals on your battle frames. You can change like the, the patterns on it, get zebra striping if you want to. And these are the sort of things we're going to monetize on the aesthetic side. On the boost side, our game is very resource oriented. Like I told you, it's got kind of like that galaxies, you know, type of crafting thing going on. And gathering resources is a huge part of the game. Uh, your efficiency to do that, the number of times per day maybe that you can call down a thumper, these are things that we're exploring as areas to monetize. Right. So, um, you know, uh, I think that there's other ways to do it. We don't actually have to sell you a gun to do this. Developers got to eat. I mean, <laughs> they got to get a paycheck somehow. <laughs> and, and games like, you know, uh, Riot's League of Legends are extremely successful without directly selling you power. Right. So I think we have proven models out there that work. Uh, the interesting thing about free-to-play games is everyone's different. So our cash shop is going to go through what we call a beta period, uh, which is not uncommon for free-to-play games where we try out uh, different models and, uh, and sell you different things and see which ones stick more. Right. And so, uh, and yeah, so we'll have, to, we'll have to experiment and figure out what works best for Firefall, which is really why it's hard for me to sit here and tell you, oh, we're going to sell X, Y, and Z, literally, because we just don't know. It's all going to depend on what It sounds, sounds like it may change based on player feedback, which is Absolutely. probably the way to go. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, speaking of player feedback, though, you guys, uh, closed beta Firefall, it's already undergone some serious changes from back when I first got into it, when it was still protected by NDA and everything. Yep. You guys have since removed levels and, and restructured how the abilities and skills work. Uh, you just released a, a new summer diary about the changing the actual character models from a cylindrical view to a more agile body part view. I mean, you make are making huge changes and it seems like a lot of them are in pretty close interaction to what the community is telling you so my question would be how does that interaction with the community help firefalls progression but aren't there some ways that could hurt it too uh, I, I think the risk is, uh, of uh, doing it the traditional way is far worse especially when you're talking about building online titles that cost tens of millions of dollars I mean um, you know uh, our, we, we say our beta is a real beta, and we mean it. We're sharing features extremely early. 
Uh, yep. Sometimes even with placeholder graphics and sound, because we want the flexibility to change it if we haven't got it right. And, um, you know, I just don't understand why uh, other studios will sit there and drop $100 million, $150 million, $200 million on a model that they think is going to work, and then have a beta where they don't have time to incorporate any feedback from their users because they're going to ship in a box <laughs> model in a couple of months. That's I, have, I have no idea what game you're talking about, Mark. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? I mean, who in their right mind would say that that's a valid model today? And yet, people actually thought this. You know, so we said, let's learn from websites. Let's learn from, you know, a lot of Web 2.0 companies. They get their product out there early. And it may not be the complete feature set. And then they're going to start getting users to actually use the product and use that to tune what they're doing. So that they're taking, actually, less risk every step along the way. And they're making sure and sure steps that what they're doing is having real impact. So when we listen to our beta testers, we, we heard, hey, it's not skill-based. The skill ceiling isn't high enough to be an esports game. We know you want that to be an important part of the game. Uh, so we went back to the drawing board and we redid everything so that we kept the, the, skills, the skill floor low, but we gave you more headroom. Uh, you know, people told us, if you want to uh, have a better shooting feeling, we're going to have to go with, you know, uh, being able to have hitboxes that closely match your body so your you know, arms and legs can be shot, things like this. That's very expensive to do on a server-side massive scale like an MMO, but we said, okay, it's got to happen. Let's go and do it because of beta feedback. And you know what? I feel more comfortable taking these steps because we shared these features early. And I'm going to be even more comfortable getting feedback on this next step when we changed everything again uh, because I'm going to know if it works. And I'm, you know, and I'm only spending the money as I go rather than just assuming it's going to work and pouring all this money into it. And then you could have an utter disaster on your hands. I mean, games now are directly connected to their customers, right? That's why we practice a lot of transparency at Red 5. That's why we're all allowed to post on the forums. It's because we know that there's no middleman anymore. And right. so we are here to make, you know, a game that's still the game that we want to make. But, you know, when we tell you what type of game we want to make, help us make that game better. Very cool. So with, with the whole community, you've even, you've had some pretty clever you know, uh, building a uh, community building events like the uh, I remember the build your own battle frame movie trailer event, mm -hmm. uh, which I took part in. I did not win. And I'm still a little bitter about that, Mark. <laughs> but uh, I'll let it slide. <laughs> but those are the types of events. I've, they're a little more ambitious than you see other companies doing. But it's typical of that type of stuff happening pre launch. Can we expect those same types of community building events post launch? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we want to take and celebrate the stories of what people are doing in-game and, uh, and share them with others. Um, we actually don't like traditional marketing. We don't see you know, the value of, of, of buying you know, extensive amounts of banner ads and things like this because you know, they're ephemeral. They only last you know, 30 days, 60 days, and then they're gone and you spent all this money. I'd rather put the money into doing things like, let's do a community event. Let's do something where you know, we can get the word of mouth spreading more, and then what they create, you know, even your video, Mike, sticks around on YouTube, right? right. It's going <laughs> to be there forever. <laughs> All right, so if I didn't ask this, Mark, I would probably be thrown out on my ass. Okay. You can't go to a Firefall video on anybody's site and not see somebody asking for a beta key. Yes. Can we expect a full open beta sometime soon? Do you have a date for that bad boy? All right, so what we did is when we decided uh, two months ago that we were going to radically revamp the system, we stopped uh, giving people beta invites. I don't know if you're, you're listening. I know. I gave my last friend ones out, and I've been waiting for the restock, and it's not happening. <laughs> right, because we use a Gmail-style type of system where people in beta will occasionally get invites that they can send to their own friends, so we kind of grow socially. So uh, I'll, I'll say it today is that after this patch releases, that's going to start again. We're going to start uh, you know, giving invites out to people that they can give to their friends, and we're going to be sending out another wave of invites to fresh testers who are uh, registered on our forums, and that whole process will start again. 
So the the idea here is if you don't know somebody in Firefall, guys, get your butt over to the site and register. <laughs> Just register on the forums. And, you know, what's going to happen is when we feel the game's hit a certain point, the number of people that are on our forums that get in is going to increase exponentially. Uh, we're not, we're not going to, you know, it's not like a linear race. Like, okay, every week we're going to do X number of keys. Like, no, as right. systems come online and we're sure and sure, you can expect you know, an exponential increase in the number of invites that go out. How about launch? Are you guys still question marking just sometime in 2012? Have you so, narrowed down a window a little bit? Uh, yes and no, because we don't do traditional launches, right? We're not going to have an open beta and a box and everything else. The cash shop will go online this year. Uh, it will be in a beta period, like I said. We're based on the results of that, and we want to get it right. Um, you know, um, it might take some time, but the, you know, the idea is that um, we will just the, the keys at some point. We will send. We will give everybody who's in the beta a enormous amount of keys, and it might as well be an open beta. At that right. Point. Uh, and we're still going to call it beta because we have big plans for Firefall. The beta tag may actually continue even while we are. You know, the term is monetized in our industry while we are, you know, earning money. And this isn't new. I mean, Notch does it with his alphas, right? Yeah. So, uh, and that, but, you know, this is obviously a larger game. It takes more to get to that point. So as a gamer yourself, last question, Mark, and I appreciate the time, but I've got to ask, you play free-to-play games. You play buy-to-play. You've played tons of games for years and years and years now. I've got to ask you, what's the single largest dollar-wise purchase you yourself have made in a game's cash shop? You, know, you, I mean, you don't have to advertise the game if you don't want to, but just the, the single biggest purchase. We'll see where you rank on the CEO list of purchases. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and name the game. It's uh, they, they actually changed the name. It used to just be called, uh, uh, it's called Mark of Mafia by Aftershock and iPhone. And that is the game that I spent the most money on way back in the day. I must have dropped about eight hundred dollars on that game. Did, I'm sorry. Did, you're you're in a room on a speakerphone. Did you say eight hundred dollars? Eight hundred dollars on an <laughs> iPhone game. And then I said, uh, "That's it. Uh, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to make test purchases here and there on other <laughs> play games, and uh, I'm going to wait for Fireball because honestly." Uh, there's still very few free-to-play games that uh, that will, will suck money from me. <laughs> well, you immediately, I'll tell you, you immediately jump to number one on the list. Okay. Uh, and you're pretty far ahead. Second place behind you is a community manager for uh, a free-to-play MMORPG at $250. Oh, so wow. you're, you're way ahead right now, Mark. <laughs> Is that a badge of shame? Is that scarlet letters? <laughs> I don't know. I think you'll have to ask your wife. <laughs> See what her opinion is on it. <laughs> hey, well, I'll know too. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time today, Mark. Uh, we all look forward to the game. We all look forward to seeing the cash shop, making sure that uh, you don't get that pay-to-win stigma, and wish you luck with the project. Can't wait. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure. All right, so welcome back. Uh, thank you again to, to Mark Kern uh, for the interview and taking some time out to chat with us, give us some information. So I, I think it's safe to say that all three of us are generally excited about Firefall. Uh, some of us have gotten to spend uh, a lot of time in it. I know, Damina, you've played it. I've played it. Kaylin, are you are you in the beta? I am not in the beta, and it kind of makes me sad now. Oh, well, then, hey, his news on the interview must have been good for you, huh? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So it sounds like they're they're not going to really be doing a closed beta, open beta launch type thing. What do you guys think of the whole? You know, once we drop this patch, we're going to give everybody some more friend invites, and then eventually we're just going to keep giving them more and more, while we're also sending out new invites based on people that are registered on the forums. And hey, who knows? The beta tag could be on the game for a while, even after the cash shop's up and running as we continue to work on things. What was your, your take on that whole conversation? Kaylin? Oh, you're going to me first. <laughs> um, I, I like it. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a really good idea. What about you, Domina? I actually think it's an amazing idea because not only are you now giving everybody these invites, so they're going to get their friends that they want to be spending their time in game with to play this game, your game, right? Right. But 
that's free advertising because then all these people, if I'm understanding correctly, will get their own invites to pass on to their friends. So, yeah, and and right so now, now you're you're growing, you're yeah. growing your fan base. Yep, just basically trying to make it go viral. Yeah, and it has. I mean, we talked on a few shows ago and and during the interview there uh, about five hundred thousand plus being registered, and they really haven't started any type of real mass marketing campaign besides putting up their own YouTube, you know, dev diaries and videos and things like that. So it's all been word of mouth. I mean, they've been giving us two invitations that we can send out to people. And then at one point, they replenish those two invitations to send out to people. And that was a while ago, and they haven't done it since. But now it seems like, from what Mark said, it's because, you know, after this patch, at some point, they're just going to dump a slew of invites on us. Uh, so that basically we can invite a ton of people. I kind of dig too that it's, there's no real complicated beta registration. They just say come to the f- the forums, uh, register to use the forums, and you're automatically in the pool to to get tickets when we send them out. Mm-hmm. Do do you did you agree with his whole uh, analysis of the gaming world and how you know particular genres or style of games last ten years and that's pretty much it? Oh, spot on. I you think, think that so. Was spot on. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty close. I mean, he brings up the the, the flight sims and the, the real-time strategies and and how those lasted. And those times, I mean, you remember when C- Command & Conquer was big, you couldn't publish a game uh, without having a successful real-time strategy game at that time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about Firefall. I like the way they're doing the beta. The cash shop sounds like it's going to be done right. Uh, still want to see that, and I'm, I'm happy to see that it's going into the next patch so that we can start getting a, a feel for it and what's going to be in there. But, uh, yeah, uh, Firefall definitely is a thumbs up from me. Kaylin? Oh, yeah. Domina, you I, said I thumbs, up two thumbs up, too. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. And, and you, can, you can never be uh, too unhappy with a company that's making changes based on player feedback. That's always the way to go. Absolutely. All right, Weekly Bombs. This is where you give us your A-bombs, something bad, your dub bomb, something very, very cool. Anything free-to-play related is free game. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, it's a f- game to get it on the show. Make sure you put it in the comments below. Uh, we're going to go through ours, then we'll go through some of the members there. What do you got, Domina? So I have an A-bomb. Um, I feel like I'm a negative Nelly. I have never given a dub bomb. So next time I'm going to try for a dub bomb. But this has just um, infuriated me slightly. Um, so my A bomb this week is for hacking in general. But in particular, um, something that I was reading about hacking that went on um, with an Android platform, a game called Dead Trigger. Um, and this relates to the discussion you were having on the Ouya. Um, oh, yeah, last week when we talked about the that whole gaming system and being Android based. So what, what happened? So there's a whole lot of hacking issues with Android and, um, this game dead trigger, it was a $1 price point, um, to play the game. And within three weeks it got hacked so bad and they had a huge bug that they needed to fix. And when they, it got hacked so horribly, they had to drop that price point to zero. And now it's free on the, uh, Google play. Um, it's free. Right. So people are up in arms because, you know, they spent a dollar. And granted, a dollar's not a huge amount of money. But I think the point is, I paid a dollar yesterday for something you get today for free. And so that makes me concerned for what yeah. happens down the road with this Ouya. You know, should this become an issue, you're not spending just a dollar. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a good point, actually, because you're talking about the same platform. With, with the Android-based. And we know that the Ouya requirements, Kaylin, are just that it have some aspect of free-to-play. And they even said, you know, a trial counts. Mm-hmm. So what if we're seeing... I, I, I agree with you. A buck uh, is you know, a dollar. Okay, no big deal. Then I, I got had is more why I'm mad, not the yeah. dollar itself. Right. But I could definitely see, you know, games on there that are costing more, uh, more than one dollar. <laughs> mm-hmm. And could this potentially become a problem? And if it does, who's who's going to be responsible, do you think, Kaylin? Is it going to be the Ouya people, or are they going to shift it and say, hey, the publishers are responsible for their their own fees and things like that? Oh, yeah. I 100%. They're not, they're not going to take the... I can't even think of the word. 
<laughs> I'm like, they're gonna not they're not gonna take responsibility for something that big. They don't want that that no, weight I'm, on their shoulders. I'm with you, but ah, and we brought but, that up. We brought that up last week that hacking and piracy and you know that's it's gonna be ripe. I oh, can yes. say though, don't you think that even the more concerning thing here regarding this particular story and the Ouya is that something that was with a price point of one dollar was worth hacking to someone <laughs> yeah <laughs> versus you know i mean seriously think about it because if you're paying more than a dollar if you're angry about a dollar you're angry on principle right i paid well, a buck for something you got it for free it's not really because that was your last possible dollar and you spent it on the android game um but that is concerning for if, if it's important enough to hack something that's worth a buck then yeah. you should be concerned that they're going after your higher price points. Yeah, definitely. I I, I agree with you. A bomb across the board from me. Oof, a little frightening to think about, especially when you start seeing ten and fifteen dollar price points for things, which I would anticipate you're going to see on the Ouya. And that's just a guess, you know. But as more and more you know, expansive things are developed, I'm assuming you'll see a higher and higher price point. Uh, I don't think you're going to get too far above 15 or 20 for for what it is, but I could definitely see a $15 price point for certain games. And man, yeah, that would uh, that opens up some dicey doors on the. And 20 Ouya. bucks is a pizza, right? I mean, what the hell are you buying pizza? Someone <laughs> needs to hack me a pizza. <laughs> hack me a pizza. <laughs> what the hell kind of pizza are you buying? It's 20 bucks. The delicious kind. <laughs> what about you, Kaylin? What's your bomb? Oh, I've I've been torn about this all day. I really wanted to do an A bomb because I just I'm so positive about these, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a dub bomb again. Oh, perfect. Um, this week I was reading a, an interview um, with American McGee, right. and they they interviewed him about going with the free to play model after his last Alice game last year, and just you a mean, phenomenal. You mean the one that really didn't go all that well? Yeah, the one that didn't really go all that well. But I mean, he is. The, the interview, I mean, people have to check it out. It was, um, I can't even remember where I read it. I'll find the link. <laughs> but he he's just basically saying that, really pushing that free-to-play is the future. And he's got a lot of good points. And and, and the, the reason I'm going to give him a dub bomb is for basically calling out the, uh, the large, he said, my theory is large box. Product publishers pre-select the titles they feel will benefit most from massive marketing campaigns and then push mountains of marketing dollars towards them regardless of the quality of the end product. And I just wanted to applaud. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I mean, that just, you know, and some, to hear some, a name, I mean, because he, he is a, a pretty big, people recognize his name. Oh, definitely. And to hear him saying things like this, it was like, you know, yeah, you know, give it to him because that's that's exactly what it is. I'm all on board. I mean, you heard Mark Kern in the interview uh, throw a shot at some big name MMO publishers that tried to do it with money and perhaps aren't working as well right now. <laughs> oh yeah. And the other point that he made was that was really good. I found the article now. I'm trying to find that. He said free to play offers an opportunity to release something into the wild and improve it continually until it returns a profit. And I really, really agree with that. I think that's a it, why I'm kind of liking free to play games a lot more. They have a lot more motivation really to to keep improving. Yeah, or you know, if you're some certain companies, you can just keep throwing crap at the wall and True. and hope something sticks eventually. Right. right. Uh I got an A bomb. Da -da -da. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Marvel Heroes by Gazillion. We talked about this a few weeks ago. I think you were on the show, uh Kalen, weren't you? Yes, I was. <laughs> So we talked about it. Uh, we weren't all that excited. It just, you know, it smacked of Diablo clone. And not only did it smack of that, they, they kind of build it as that because one of the creators of the game is the one of the masterminds behind the Diablo franchise. So they, they're, I mean, I can understand them trying to get people excited about that. Uh, that might not be the best way to advertise, though, given some split decisions on Diablo 3. Uh, yeah, so with a superhero skin, uh, they put out a new trailer after Comic-Con, um, and if you haven't seen the trailer, check it out, it's it's over at, at the website. I I just think, I, I don't think from the trailer that they could have made super, superheroes look more boring. What a, 
I, it was like a bunch of punches and kicks and off to the next superhero and you really didn't see any anything that made me excited am i crazy do you do you ladies check this out right yes and i my first initial thought like i told you before was rock'em sock'em robots with yeah. superhero costumes i mean that's what it looked like me today it, it was <laughs> basically an animated rock'em sock'em robots yeah i i'm ugh, I, I saw it and was like yeah okay way to m- make me not less excited about something i wasn't excited about anyway so a bomb there i mean I, hey i hope it it works out and it's it's good i like superhero games but Man, just not looking good by me. Maybe I'm just nuts. Uh, member bombs from Bass Cave. We got great shows always, guys. You still rock every show. Thank you for that. We appreciate that. Now to balance that comment, I'm going to a bomb Dark Blood Online for insulting my sensibilities as a gamer for marketing on its mature comment, which would imply a focus on the 18 to 30-ish demographic, but including boob sliders and ridiculous jiggle physics that seem to assume I have the mentality of a 14-year-old. I'm 19, not 12. Please don't assume I play games to look at boobs. That's what porn is for. (laughs) (laughs) So Dark Blood and uh, Basquet trying to uh, pretty much just agreeing with us. Uh, Melon Druid, I have a A A-bomb for Jagex. After trying to update the combat in RuneScape, which kind of failed, they added a cash shop with cosmetics and a Wheel of Fortune where you can buy spins for which gives you XP lamps. <laughs> <laughs> so RuneScape. Yeah, I, there were a bunch of people excited about that combat update, Kaylin. Kaylin? I have no idea. Wow, my microphone just got muted. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I swear, there's like a ghost that lives in my house that randomly mutes my microphone. <laughs> yep, it happens to you more often than anybody. <laughs> and it's not like it's one of those push-button mutes either. It's got a little switch that you have to talk on. <laughs> uh, Inflictus, a uh, long-time uh, free-to-play cast listener and MMO bomber. How you doing, Inflictus? Uh, gives an, a dub bomb. Found this over the weekend, and yes, it did give me chills playing it. Jumped on more than once. Hairs on arms stood up. Goosebumps were made. The game is Slender, a free 50 meg download. Truly worth a small download if you've never played and you like to get spooked. The fan base site that has the download is slendergame.com. S-L-E-N-D-E-R-G-A-M-E dot com. Yeah, that was... Uh, yes, I totally agree. If you have not tried that, then you need to download it. I am totally going to check that out. Yeah. I'll check oh, it out you, when the you, sun comes up. <laughs> oh, you totally oh, yeah. do. Uh, either of you play Amnesia. I know it's not free to play, but or, or watch uh, any videos on it. I've seen some videos on it. Yeah. If you, uh, Damina, do you play that? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, then you got to play Slender. You'll like it. So Mr. Drag Arts says, my view on pay to win is buying power because last week's question was what does pay to win mean to you we all have different ideas so what's your definition uh mr drag art says uh, pay to win is buying power such as defensive charms offensive charms or anything that gives an advantage to combat that normal free players do not a fair cash shop to me is ridiculous cosmetics me want cowboy hat for me heavy Go Team Fortress 2. With some EXP boosters. Now it's time for my bomb. A bomb to Outspark. They made a new game called Dark Blood yet, or but yet they still haven't come around to fixing Divine Souls. Yeah, I wouldn't hold my breath on that one either. Uh, F bomb to. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new bomb this we week. Have a new bomb, apparently. Uh, to Sony Online Entertainment. Their kid games suck. Honestly, the only reason why Free Realms and Clone Wars Adventures are around is to give Sony Online Entertainment money. Hopefully that money goes into making Planet Side 2. P.S. Don't make games for kids if all you're going to do is steal their parents' money. So Mr. Dragart's uh, getting the wallet drained by the children, it sounds like. <laughs> they kind of do that from birth, man. doesn't matter. <laughs> it's in the territory. Ugh. Uh, so questions of the week. What does pay to win mean to you? Kalen, real quick, let's give you your answer. Um, I'm I'm dead on with you. Pay to win is if there is something that I can buy for real world money that I can obtain in no other way through the game, and it will impact gameplay, then it's pay to win. Damina, I'm totally on board with that too. Cool. I so think... I gave I gave mine last week. So we're all pretty much in line. Yeah. 
Uh, so let's see what the viewers had to say. Willie Wolfman said, what's my take on pay to win? Perfect example is Battlefield Heroes from wonderful EA. In the beta, everything was affordable. You could only rent guns, but you can easily get the in-game currency back. There's, there were reskins for sale for cash shop currency, along with permanent weapons and clothes, which I could accept. However, after a later update, they added super weapons, a lot more customization, to the point you cried, and even later, more OP weapons, a skill-negating system, and more. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 Willy Wolfman, a little upset about Battlefield Heroes. Uh, Zerithos, pay for power slash pay to win. My feelings are basically identical towards yours. That was the point we just uh, gave, was we're pretty much on the same page. A game that hosts items in their item shop that gives an unfair end game advantage, or a game like S4 League. You purchase items which have an expiration date forcing you to keep purchasing these said items, or you will be at a severe disadvantage. That being one of the largest payment schemes I have ever seen, in my opinion. Uh, I kind of agree on that one. I mean, they obviously has the same definition for us as us for the most part. I, I don't like the expiration date items. No. You know, I don't mind them so much. Like, Brick Force does that where you can use the in-game currency to purchase a weapon or whatever, and you get it for 7 days, 30 days, whatever you want it for. Uh, I'm cool with that. If it's a cash shop item, I better own the son of a bitch. That's right. I agree with you 100%. I mean, I don't, if you're going to charge a dollar for it, then I own it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that such as the <laughs> law of purchasing, really. But it, 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 honestly, when you get to something like that, where you just have to keep buying, and you pretty much are forced to keep buying it over and over again, why don't you set up a subscription at that point? Because that's just not free to play. Yep. No. Mm -hmm. I'm Diddy 1987. I agree with the majority of the pay-to-win definitions here on the site, but I would like to add that there should be a reasonable amount of time commitment for equivalent cash shop bonuses where some games have items that are more or less required for funness, and the, I don't know if that's a word, uh, and the time it takes to farm them is just unreasonable for an average casual player. Now, where this threshold of reasonable time lies, and how a casual player should be defined, I don't know. But true free-to-play gamers have this down to a science. Uh, I can see where I'm Diddly's coming from, but I... I to me... I. And and Alice is a perfect example because I had said on on an episode of Pay to Win that that it was not Pay to Win, uh, and then a lot of people disagreed because the runes that are pretty much required to to be end game competitive um, are cash up items, and you can get them in game for gold, but it, it takes a ridiculous amount of time to farm up the gold to get them, so it makes it not fun. Uh, I really don't have a problem with that personally. I know that time is relative, and I may have more than you, or I may have less than you, but I th I personally think that if you have a, a, a time to get it in the game, fine, even if it takes me a little longer. Now, I know that that pisses some people off, so I'm diddly, you're dead on. Um, we just disagree on the whole time thing. I think you you run into... A hard time, like Um Diddly points out, defining reasonable time and casual player to make the line on on how how far that goes. What about you, Kalen? You know, I I can see where he's coming from. It's I I do agree with him though that it's definitely pay for fun at that point. Yeah, there there is pay, but I think I agree with a reason. I mean, if if I can pay five bucks for something, or I'm gonna have to grind for. 20 hours to get the gold equivalent, then yeah, that's a little excessive. Alexi 14 Abel says, Hey guys, can you talk about Forsaken World? It's a good game and not pay to win. We have. Uh, we've talked about Forsaken World before. I've mentioned that uh, uh, I'm a huge Forsaken World fan. Uh, not a big perfect world guy, but I love Forsaken World. And we actually will be talking about the game itself more in depth on an upcoming show. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, Takeya says, what do you guys think about Guild Wars 2? <laughs> 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 Worth it to buy, stays alive, great show, guys. Well, thank you for the compliment. Um, I'm buying it. I, I already bought it. I We've talked about this before. I'm, I love Guild Wars 2. I, I think it's, I don't think it's going to live up to the insane hype 
that the game has received, but I don't think anything can. Uh, but that being said, the game is freaking good. It's freaking good. You getting Guild Wars 2, Kaylin? I know I, I know Demina is. <laughs> I don't know. I, my bookshelf is full with about 20 games that I bought, played for a month, and didn't like. And yeah, I, and you I, got all kinds of betas starting. Yeah, I think I'm I'm a, I'm not going to get it right away. I'm going to see how how the hype goes cuz it's like everything is, you know, I buy all these things, there's all this hype, oh it's going to be great, and then it's like this is absolute garbage and then everyone's like, "Yeah, this is crap." Like 2 months <laughs> later. So I'm going to give it a couple months for people to come out with their true opinions before I will buy it. Uh Genji says, "Yup, greetings from Portugal." Uh which at one point there were two top comments that had, I think, you know, in the teens, thumbs up on YouTube, and both of them were greetings from Portugal. So, <laughs> <laughs> hello to everyone listening to the show in Portugal. You rock. Everybody else rocks too, but last week, Portugal was representing something fierce on the YouTube video. Question of the week for next week, guys. What's the worst free-to-play MMO you've ever played and why? <laughs> <laughs> discussion next week ought to be fun let's throw it around for the final word guys hope you enjoyed the show make sure you rate comment subscribe come on over to mmobomb.com check out all the other great shows we've got on there oh and if you didn't hear there's a new employee a Mr. Spunkify is awesome. on mmobomb.com hmm hmm interesting uh, stay tuned. I'm sure you'll be seeing more and more comment from Spunkify. We welcome him to the team, and he will be on a future free-to-play cast in a couple of weeks here, so we look forward to that as well. Throw it around for the final word to Kalen. It's another another good week. <laughs> Get a week off next week. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, like I said last week, you can find me on Twitter. It's Kalen2, K-A-H-L-Y-N, and the number two. Cool. Demina. Fun to be here as always, and now I'm feeling like I need a Twitter. I don't know. I know, they um, forced me into it too. <laughs> I'm going to have to make a Twitter, so stay tuned for that. But thanks for having me as always. It was a great time. Very cool. Guys, for Kaylin and Demina, I'm Magic Man. You can follow me on Twitter at Magic Man1. That's M A G I C K M A N N 1. Or you can hit me on the email. That's Magic Man at MMOBomb.com. M A G I C M A N. Until next time, guys, it's been fun. Stay safe. We'll see you on the servers.